Hey, good morning everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make maple toffee. I did have a request for maple candy and I thought about it and I figured a toffee would be a good way to go. And this is a very simple recipe. I will give you the ingredients in a minute, but I can just tell it to you. It's that simple. It's a cup each of um, maple syrup and heavy cream, the 35% whipping cream. Half a cup each of white sugar and light brown sugar and one teaspoon of salt, regular table salt. Um, and cook it with a candy thermometer to 250, let it set, score it, you're done. Okay, so for the people that don't want to watch the rest, you can go now. <laughs> but for the people that haven't made candy at all and do want to see the rest, um, here we go. For this, you will need some specialized utensils. I mean, the wooden spoon and the pot, not really. You will need a candy thermometer. Uh, unless you're an experienced candy maker, you cannot make this visually. And if you could, you wouldn't be watching this anyways. So, you will also need uh, a square cake pan. I like the tin foil. You can use other kinds. The reason I um, like this one is the heat transfer. It cools down fairly rapidly, and you will need some parchment paper, and then, of course, some measuring spoons in a cup. Okay, so here's the list of ingredients. I'm using a three-quart saucepan for this. I would recommend this as the minimum size. If you've got bigger, that's great. Make sure it does have a heavy bottom uh, for candy making. If you use a thin pan, it's going to burn. So just measure everything into there. Once everything's in there, get your wooden spoon and gently stir everything up. With the brown sugar, you should ideally try to avoid chunks in it. I think I've gotten a couple. And you want to mash them down before you turn the heat on. If there's any like solidified dark, dark brown chunks that got wet somehow, just pick those out. You don't want that in your candy because any preformed sugar crystals may cause it to crystallize you will see a lot of candy recipes that will tell you to brush down the sides of the pan with a pastry brush and water um, personally I really don't care about that for the simple reason that when this cooks it will boil up higher than where I stirred it on the side of the pan and provided I'm pretty quick about it and don't let it dry out it really doesn't crystallize in my experience. And make sure you've got everything worked through before you turn the heat on because once you do, you will not be stirring this at all. Turn the heat on to medium. You don't want to turn this to high because if the flames come up the side, it can burn the stuff on the side of the pan. For now, and get your um, pan prepared in the meantime. If you've got pre-cut parchment sheets like I do, use this method. If not, uh, just measure it in the pan and cut it off from a roll. So what I do is I take my sheet, measure it in half, put it in the bottom, and see how far across it goes. And just put your finger down there. And fold it over and just mark it. Okay, take that out. And hold it at the top where you marked it. Just pull straight down. Okay. And you can either get scissors or just tear it. If it's out by a little bit, it doesn't matter. Obviously, if it tears in half, get another piece to start again. This should be good. So get rid of that. And, oops. 
That's not well behaved. I'll try the other side. Let's give it a sharp increase. There we go. Okay, and just separate it like that. And put one piece down here. Fold it over. Turn it around. Put the other piece. And do the same thing. The lengths don't have to be matching. What's important is that you've got enough in there, enough overhang, that you can just pull it out when it's cooling off. Because you're going to score it halfway through. You can't wait till it's completely cool to score it. Uh, and the scoring's not necessary, you know. You can just let this dry and then take it and then whack it with, uh, you know, uh, the bottom of a cleaver or something. It'll shatter into nice bite-sized pieces. I noticed that I didn't have the pan completely centered, and if you notice on the side there, I'll zoom in a bit, there's um, a potentially burnt spot. Not to worry, I got my pastry brush and a bit of water, and this is a case where I will get rid of that, because you don't want a burnt taste in there. That little bit won't affect it if you would let it cook all the way it may. Well, while you're at it, if, this, if you do want to clean up the rest of the pan with the water to avoid crystallization, this is how you do it. And I will turn this down a bit because when this gets going full tilt, it can boil over. Um, I have lost the clip to my candy thermometer, but oddly enough, it's quite well trained and it just stays where I put it. Isn't that nice, eh? I just turned this down because it started to take off on me and I'll just nudge it up a bit so you can see what I was talking about. I've turned up the heat just a notch on the gas and you'll see how quickly that comes up. Which is why you never do this in a small pan. Now, I'm going to turn this down right away and hopefully it'll come down. If it doesn't, I'm going to grab it and just take the thermometer out and pull it off the heat. If you've got electric, you may have to do this a couple of times to find your exact setting that works for you, that it cooks fast enough without boiling over. As the moisture boils off, you can usually nudge it up a little bit through the cooking process because um, the less fluid in there, the less bubbles. This is looking pretty stable right now. So, I'm just going to move the camera so I can get a good reading at eye level. And right now it is at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. And I will have to turn this down a little because you can see it's going for the gold there. And if you've ever had hot candy boil over, it's a huge mess to clean up and you can get burned very badly. So this is where I have to put in my safety warning that when you're going to make candy, like this always make sure that you do not have small children or pets running around in the room just for safety so it's at 212 right now or 100 degrees centigrade which is the boiling point of water and you can see it subsided quite a bit so I'm going to try to turn it up a bit um, to speed up the process okay it's looking fairly stable here so I'm just going to turn the camera off for a bit um, and do keep an eye on it. Never walk away from hot syrup. It's a safety issue uh, because for whatever reason if it overboils um, you've got to be there to get the pan off the stove right away. So here's 220. Um, it did take about 12 minutes to reach this point. And I'll give you a shot every 10 degrees or so. This is 230 and this actually only took four minutes to reach um, this temperature. So that's one thing you should always remember when you're doing candy making and another reason not to walk away from the stove is that the first bit is really slow. Uh, when you start to get close to your target temperature it goes really really fast and this is a good time actually you should turn down your heat 
I'm not worried about over boiling at this point I'm more worried about uh, missing my temperature okay we're at 240 right now and that only took three minutes to go so I'm just gonna watch this like a hawk well it's at 249 now so I'm gonna turn the heat off because it will keep cooking and pull the thermometer out it will do the extra degree while I'm just bringing this over just set that on plate there and you just fix the zoom do not even think of scraping the pan for this okay if you do it will crystallize your candy and you won't get what you want you can leave it drip like this if you want like I said don't scrape it and honestly there's not that much left there's just a coating in the bottom and for cleaning candy just uh, pop this in the sink with some cold water and let it soak it should just come right out so this has only been a couple of minutes here you can see that um, all the large bubbles are broken out and the other ones will work their way out of the candy on its own and it is tempting to like play with the paper or turn it around or something do not do that this can induce crystallization and you will not get a toffee it's been about 20 minutes or so and what you do is you just do a feel test so it's warm to the touch but it's not hot that's very important if it's too hot it may still crystallize at this point it's highly unlikely but it's still malleable a bit so just pull it out and get it on your cutting board and what I do is I try to peel back the paper now yeah so just score it I use a cleaver because it's nice and heavy uh, you don't want to cut all the way through it yet unless you can now some people do oil their cleavers for this I don't usually yeah that's working quite nice you know what I think I might just cut it let's just see how this goes yeah this is scoring quite nicely so it's going to make 64 pieces what I'll do is I'll score it first just to show you that and I think it might just be at that magic temperature that I can cut it which I think is better actually because then you don't have to worry about having it just explode on you and shatter when you try to break it up later Okay, so that's scored. Now I'm going to try to cut. A rocking motion works better for this. I think we're through. Try it the other way. Yeah, so I'm just going to keep going there. Once you've got it in four, you can make short work of it. And I do like to still cut it on the parchment because it's less chance of damage to the cutting board. Um, so it's just like a quick two cut each way. Now, one thing I should mention with this particular toffee, um, it's a little unusual. The taste the first day is not that great. Uh, it actually improves over time. Uh, if you... <laughs> wait a day to eat this yeah it requires a little discipline there but if you do you'll find that the maple flavor really really comes out nicely on the second day so I caught it just in time if you wait too long um, they'll harden up considerably that you can't actually get through them um, the last few I did have some difficulty this is what the finished product looks like and they're quite nice and glossy and um, if you leave them overnight they will have the best taste uh, they're a little hard to start off with, but they do soften up and do get a nice chewy texture and a really good flavor. So this is how I make maple toffee. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you again.